In this video, I'm going to try to give a basic picture of what happens uh, to the photodiode, to a photodiode when it's illuminated with light. <clears throat> Let me start where we ended in one of the previous videos of drawing a photodiode. And so I am going to draw it here. It's the triangle up, down. And we have the associated silicon with that photodiode. Remember, this is just a symbol, and this is the silicon. So there we have n-type and p-type. Uh, so this part here is physically represented by this whole section. If you want to kind of get down to it this way, this part is this section. This is the circuit diagram symbol. This is the circuit symbol. And this is, uh, I don't know what you want to call it exactly, but the silicon, represented in silicon. <clears throat> this is n-type silicon, p-type silicon. Okay, let's flip it on its side to begin the discussion. Let me redraw it. I'm going to have a volume of silicon here, volume of silicon, where we have, cut it down the center, here we have up on the p-type, p-type silicon, and here we have n-type silicon, <clears throat> n-type silicon, n for negative, p for positive, positive type silicon, negative type silicon. Okay, this whole mass is one piece of semiconductor, one piece of semiconductor, semiconductor, of, of the semiconductor type is silicon. Okay, let me scroll down. In fact, I'll do it like this. Okay. Now here, this dimension, and I'm going to draw an energy band diagram in a second to try to motivate uh, more clearly what's happening. This is distance. Distance in meters. And this is also distance. Distance in meters. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to draw the energy band diagram for this uh, diode. Oh, let me do one more thing. Let me uh, say this is grounded, and this is, I don't know, it's something like plus 5 volts, whatever it is. Okay, uh, for the energy band diagram, I'll start by drawing a Fermi level, a flat Fermi level. We're going to assume that there's no current in the system, that it's in equilibrium. So I'm just going to start with that and draw a flat line. Okay. It's E, F, which is the Fermi level, Fermi level. Okay. With the p-type silicon, we know that the valence band is going to be relatively close to the, uh, pause. Okay. the valence band is going to be relatively close to the Fermi level, and the conduction band will be relatively far away, E, C, E, V, for valence band, valence band, and conduction band. On the n-type side, it's going to be exactly the reverse. So the conduction band is going to be relatively close to the Fermi level, and the valence band will be relatively far away. I'm going to draw it here. I apologize if this isn't to scale, but Go ahead and do it. The distance between the valence band and the conduction band is 1.1 eV, and that's the same as it is here. That's also 1.1 eV. Now, the, di the x dimension here, this direction, this direction, is still, uh, it's still distance. But now, in the y direction, as we go up, we have its energy, energy, energy of an electron, energy of an electron. And the, that's the energy of the electron as distinct from the energy of a whole. So uh, this is a higher potential. Uh, the electron has a higher potential energy when it's up higher on the screen. Okay. We will draw the 
energy bands as they transition from one, one region to another. And I'll try to do it a little carefully. This is not drawn to scale. Okay, it's not very well drawn, but there it is. So this is the dividing line down the middle. It's a physical dividing line. Okay, now what happens if a photon comes into the system? Let's say a photon, a red photon, so I can keep the colors distinct. Let's say a red photon comes burrowing in to the photodiode and creates an electron hole pair right here. So we have an electron and a hole. We know from before that the electron will want to go to the 5 volt terminal and the hole will want to go to the ground. Well, What does this mean when we go to the energy band diagram? Well, since we have distance on the x-axis, we can more or less draw the photon coming in. This is a non-standard way of looking at the system, but let's do it anyway. And so that photon gets absorbed into the lattice, into the silicon lattice. That energy gets absorbed. And then an electron that was sitting here in the valence band pops up to the conduction band. It has enough energy to pop up to the conduction band. And this is assuming that this photon has uh, energy greater than, greater than 1.1 eV. It has an energy enough to excite the electron from the valence band to the conduction band. Okay, this electron down here got excited from the valence band to the conduction band, so it's no longer there in the valence band. What's left in its place is the absence of an electron, which we can call a hole. That's how it's treated in semiconductor physics. Okay. Now we have this electron in the conduction band, and because it's in the conduction band, it's free to run around. It's free to conduct. And what it's going to do is it's going to try to find its way to the lowest potential point in the system. And since we're drawing the y direction as potential energy, and if we're up higher, we know that this is a higher potential energy than down here. So the electron's going to want to go to the lowest potential possible. So it's going to go this way. Okay? And the hole will do just the opposite. It'll go uphill because that's its lowest potential. Now, the Fermi level, when something like this happens, is not going to be flat or it's not going to be continuous, but uh, I'm going to assume that there is only one photon coming in the system, so we can still make the assumption that the Fermi level is flat and continuous. What would happen if the photon, instead of hitting in this region in the p-type silicon, what if it came and hit in the n-type silicon? So let me backtrack a little bit with my colors. up a minute. Oh. Okay, I erased it. Let's say the photon comes in and hits right there in the n-type silicon and creates an electron hole pair. Well, we know that again the electron is going to want to go to the plus 5 volts and the hole will want to find its way to ground, which is the lowest potential in the system. And that same photon, if we drew it in this energy band diagram, at the bottom it's going to come in to the photodiode and it's going to be dissipated into the lattice of silicon that we're assuming that there's enough energy to take an electron and excite it to the conduction band so now the electron is there it's no longer in the valence band and instead there's a hole in the valence band and again still the electron is going to roll downhill in the energy band diagram and try to get to the to the um, highest potential of the system, which is plus 5 volts, which is the highest potential, but it's the lowest potential energy for the electron. It's the highest potential, <laughs> it's the highest potential plus 5 volts in the system, but it's the lowest potential energy. Those are two separate terms, don't get them confused. Uh, then the whole is going to find its way to the lowest potential in the system, which is also its lowest potential energy. Okay, and that's going to be to roll uphill in this band diagram to zero volts. Okay, I'm going to try to motivate very quickly some more intuition about these uh, energy band diagrams. So I'm going to scroll down. And let's say, let's take a situation that's very familiar to you. Glass. 
Let me change back to white. From a window, glass window, which is silicon dioxide, sand in a way. And this is a semiconductor material, but it's a large band gap semiconductor material, a wide band gap. Wide band gap. And how would that look? If we drew the conduction band and we drew the valence band, we know that for silicon, this was 1.1 eV. What is it for silicon dioxide? For silicon dioxide, the energy gap is about 9 electron volts, which is much, much greater than 1.1 electron volts. For silicon, this is for silicon dioxide. Okay, so we know that a photon coming in would have to have greater than or equal to, greater than 9 electron volts to excite an electron from the valence band to the conduction band. Okay, well, what is visible light? Visible light, let's take the highest energy visible light, which is 400 nanometers, which is blue. If we convert that to its energy, it's about 3 electron volts. 3 electron volts is much less than 9 electron volts, so that excitation of the electron won't happen, this photon will not be absorbed, and it will pass through the glass. And that corresponds exactly to your everyday experience. You can see visible light through a window, through glass, through silicon dioxide. The photon coming in towards your eye doesn't have enough energy to excite an electron to the conduction band. One more quick point of motivation. You can th see that the band gap here is going to determine, is going to be highly related to your wavelength response. And so when you get out towards longer wavelengths than visible light, like towards the infrared, region, you're going to want a, a smaller band gap. So instead of being like 1.1 eV for silicon, you may want something that's, say, 0 0.5 eV or whatever. And I'll cover that in future videos.